It is now day 27 of Iceland's latest eruption of the Reykjanes volcano. Because of its unusual longevity, the still ongoing eruption has now surpassed the duration of two of Fygrill CX3 recent eruptions, having just surpassed the length of the July to August 2023 eruption. This means that we now have the longest Reckonus Peninsula eruption since Fagridol's VX 184-day-long eruption in 2021. However, all indications point towards an eruption which is now just barely hanging on, as effusive basaltic volcanic eruptions seem to completely cease if lava fusion drops below approximately 3 cubic meters per second. For comparison, the average lava fusion rate between April 3rd and April 8th was only 20% more than this threshold, averaging 3.6 cubic meters per second. This has occurred alongside a drop in sulfur dioxide emissions which reduced by 64.2% between April 2nd and April 8th, going from 39 to 14 kilograms of this gas being emitted every second. Despite this, the singular still erupting vent has still put on a show as it is no longer erupting at a constant rate. Instead, it is peaking and waning in a cycle which seems to last approximately 33 hours. This cycle at the low end still produces an orange glow, but only rarely has a small fragment of lava jump above its crater rim. In contrast, the opposite high end of the cycle produces magnificent lava overflows, albeit not lava fountaining like witnessed during the latter stages of Fygridol CX 2021 eruption. This overflow activity most notably occurred between April 7th and 8th, where temporarily increased lava fusion caused molten rock to pool within the crater of the active spatter cone. Since it was temporarily filling in a faster rate than a natural pre-existing crack could drain it, the lava level increased in height. This continued until it overtopped a section of the 23 meter high spatter cone flooding outwards like a very small scale dam burst. Due to gravity, this lava moved at a very high speed albeit only for a few seconds, perhaps surpassing 10 miles an hour for a time. Before I elaborate on what eruptive activity might occur next, I will discuss why this waning and waxing cycle is occurring. I interpret that the singular spatter cone and the magma conduit which is feeding it is acting much like one of Yellowstone National Park's more than 1200 geysers. This suggests a low supply of magma, an underground cavity which is partially above an adjacent section of the magma conduit and a low gas content. Molten rock and gas is likely partially building at depth while a portion of it erupts onto the surface. Building up in a bubble trap-like structure, the pressure and amount of lava builds up until it gets large enough to be released. When this occurs, lava drains away and the gas is released upwards, causing a sustained period of increased lava effusion. Plenty of eruptions have produced this type of cyclical activity, but at every one, including at Galapagos's Fernandina volcano, such activity indicates a near-end stage of an eruption. In the next few days, the eruption could continue to decrease in output and continue its waxing and waning cycle. Or, true geyser-like lava fountains could emerge with essentially zero eruptive output between the high points in activity. It all depends on how constricted sections of the magma conduit become, along with the size of the bubble trap underneath a spatter cone. The truth is, we do not know for sure what will happen next, other than the eruption does seem to be slowly ending. As for an updated total on lava fusion, so far 6.14 square kilometers of ground have been covered by 32.5 million cubic meters of molten rock. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's supporters on Patreon and YouTube members.